Were you in on this from the start? Hey, Claudia. I got a very special gift for you from Liliana. Throughout the history of power, Tommy's journey in the criminal world has been marked by ambition to be the biggest and most feared drug dealer in the streets. But for Tommy to be the best in the game, he's had to overcome a series of hurdles in life, which includes losing loved ones to committing some heinous acts himself. Delving deeper into Tommy Egan psych as a character, we can also say he does have some sociopathic tendencies. For Tommy this all starts from his upbringing and the childhood trauma he faced at being involved in a chaotic and toxic family environment. Something 4 season 2 have really done a great job in exploring which is a huge credit to the writers. Tommy's also shown he can be impulsive and reckless and at times, he lacks skill and remorse, eliminating anybody that gets in his way of him and his end goal. However, Tommy has also shown he does have a loving side to his character and I would go as far as saying he is a bit of a romantic who has a big heart for family. Although he does have a funny way of showing it, he does care for them. Now as we run through this breakdown of 4 season 2 episode 10, I do think it's important we look at the sacrifices Tommy's had to make and the question we should all be asking when we reach the end of this breakdown, what is the true cost of being the king of the streets in Chicago? Is it worth sacrificing love, family bonds and your own humanity in this pursuit of power, powder and respect? Episode 10 kicks off with Tommy reeling from finding out that Vic was a CI in his organization and so was Diamond. Tommy thought it was Jannard who was a CI and even though Diamond did say it was Vic, the fact that Vic killed a cop in front of Tommy along with killing his father, Tommy thought he was a real one. Unfortunately the CI was right under Tommy's nose the entire time and so nobody was taking this harder than Tommy, especially because we all know what he thinks of snitches. We do also have to mention that Tommy never suspected Vic which stays very true to his character from the very beginning of power, at times, Tommy has been very trusting and trusting of the wrong people. Now having said that, despite Vic being a dead man walking, they still had to deal with the issue with the Serbian network who were working with the Marquez cartel but very early on in episode 10, we got the sense that there was some brewing tension between Tommy and Diamond and we are going to take a look at this in a bit more detail towards the end of this breakdown. Tommy and Diamond summon Vic to a meeting to let them know they were closer than ever before to becoming the connect of Chicago. Their coalition has stopped bodies from dropping in the streets, they were making more money than ever before and they also had Vic to thank for that because he gave them access to the north. Now this all sounded too good to be true because it was, but Diamond and Tommy were keeping their cards really close to their chest because the best possible play in this scenario was to use Vic to feed law enforcement the wrong information but at the end of the day, he was a dead man walking. This is where Tommy began to put his plan into motion at this moment in time in the streets. Tommy and Shanti were enemies, the streets thought that Shanti had left the CBI to work for Claudia and the Marquez cartel and so to everybody in the streets and Claudia, they were enemies. Now Tommy wanted to know the details of Claudia and the Serbians first meet with the Marquez cartel because he was going to feed this information to Vic which would have gone back to law enforcement but Shanti was playing hardball, that's because we all know who she is and what angle she is working. This is where I do think we need to take a grand look at the power universe overall. Shanti not only wanted to know Tommy's plan to be kept in the loop but because she wants to be able to learn what Tommy knows, his strategic moves and how he thinks. If you know how someone thinks, then you can beat them at their own game. Throughout power we've seen various characters learn from their mentors but also their enemies and use their tactics against them. So Shanti may have been on Tommy's side when it came to bringing down Claudia but based on plays from the past like Andre Coleman, Kanan Stark and a few others, Tommy does need to keep a close eye on her. As Shanti was working her angle with Tommy, Janard was working his to a diamond However, first on the agenda was Mad Dog, the 16 year old kid that killed Leon. Now Diamond didn't care that he was just a kid or he was King Kilo's nephew, age was just a number and I do have to agree to a certain extent. Just like Ghost once said to Tariq in power, the moment he pulled that trigger he made a man's move and Mad Dog had to pay for killing an innocent. Unfortunately Diamond couldn't take the kill shot and risk a war with the RDs and that's because of their coalition. Now he and Tommy did have further plans which he did spill to Jannard past and present which I don't think was such a great idea. Just like the picture he and Shanti use later, information of this caliber is dangerous in the streets. Although I still do think Janard is a little conflicted, he looked at the picture of him and Diamond when they were younger and you could definitely tell he is in two minds. Now with law enforcement, Vic tells Stacy Marks that he's got information that Tommy and the Estrada cartel were having a meet and that's where they can bust Tommy and arrest them all. But we all know Stacy Marks and so does Vic, she's always moving the goalposts so she wanted a location, a date and time and if he got that then she'd get him into Witsec. Now we do have to remember why Vic went to law enforcement in the first instance which goes back to episode 5. I want her ass in jail. 
death is too easy. She's got to suffer. Claudia tried to kill him along with their father, and his end goal has always been to make his sister suffer for being the manipulative, power-hungry bitch that she is. So he tells Claudia that he's signing everything over to her, the mansion, the business, everything was hers. But first, he wanted her to admit that she did set him up to die at the Flynn mansion. Now, unbeknownst to Claudia, Vic recorded the entire conversation which was key when it came to her arrest later on. But for now, the Flynn throne was Claudia's, just like she wanted. She was sitting in the chair that once used to belong to her father, Unfortunately for Claudia, she's got the same traits as Walter Flynn. She's controlling, manipulative and power hungry and it was always going to be her downfall. When it comes to the family dynamics between Kate, JP and Tommy, this is the Tommy and Kate that we're all used to seeing. This toxic mother and son relationship that we were so used to seeing back in power. Now Tommy made her aware of how he was used to her appearing and disappearing in his life but she couldn't do that to JP. This is also where I do kind of agree with Kate. She was doing good until they made it seem like they killed DMAC. She was 12 days sober, she was going to AA meetings, and she was really trying to be a better version for herself for DMAC. On the flip side, they are pretty fucked up as each other, which does go back to the theme of this breakdown. Their relationship was built on a toxic foundation. Now, just before we finish with Kate and Tommy, this is also where Tommy found out DMAC had broken out of Great Shaw's Youth Academy. DMAC was hiding at Marshall's, and he was doing as he told, but I think we all knew that was never gonna last. There is only so much you can control someone like DMAC, and the situation is very similar to Tariq St. Patrick. There's only so much Ghost and Tommy could control Tariq, because at the end of the day, these kids, they want to be in the streets and be gangsters, and they ain't willing to listen to the old heads who have been in their shoes. This mirror shot was also a classic scene that we're all too familiar with in the Power Universe, and this is who DMAC chose to be. Now, this is also where it kind of gets messy with the DMAC situation. Not only did he tell Marshall about him killing a cop, Marshall told him about Mad Dog and how he was the one who killed Leon and how Diamond wanted him dead. However, the coalition made it difficult because his uncle is ahead of the RDs, King Kilo. But DMAC thought it was his way to get back into the CBI and getting in the good graces of Diamond. So what did DMAC go and do? He went and killed Mad Dog in broad daylight where anybody could have seen him and of course they did. Now DMAC thought he did Diamond a favour and we all know Diamond wanted Mad Dog dead for killing Leon but he didn't want this coming back to the CBI because of their coalition. They had King Kilo to think about and now this was a real problem for both Diamond and DMAC. Especially because Jannard did say somebody did recognise him. So as soon as King Kilo found out, they had a big problem. It put their whole coalition at risk and the only way to solve this situation was to have a sit down with King Kilo, which couldn't be done by Diamond. He was a former inmate, so Jannard said he'll go and see him and offer him DMAC, which by the way, Diamond wasn't against. Now, we'll come back around to DMAC in just a moment, but King Kilo wasn't messing around with Jay. He's a big guy, and he went straight down to business, because word on the streets was, CBI killed his nephew. But fortunately for Diamond and the CBI, Jannard was able to smooth things over with King Kilo. He told him that there was way too much money to be made in the streets, but more importantly, he'll personally hand DMAC over to him when he gets out of prison, and that's a huge clue for Season 3. King Kilo will be on the streets in Season 3, and this is going to cause chaos, especially with this DMAC situation. Now with DMAC, he's going down a very dangerous road which we've seen before with Tariq St. Patrick. He tells Kate the streets is his family and he is beginning to turn. He wants to be a gangster and he also made a threat to kill JP, just like Tariq did with Ghost. So DMAC going forward will be a big problem and he will be at the centre of the story in Season 3 in more ways than one. Now only when he faces some real consequences will he realise the streets isn't what it seems. Tariq wanted to be in the streets and now spends most of his time fighting just to protect those he loves and also to just to survive another day. However, the key difference is, DMAC grew up in the streets, and so the streets is where he believes he belongs. The streets is also where Tommy believes he belongs, despite him sending some Barcelona tickets to Morea. But I am glad that he did use the word fantasy in episode 9, because that's all it ever will be. Love may be in the air for both of them, but Tommy did warn Morea that he will always come back to Chicago because the streets is where he belongs. And I do guess that's one of the key differences between the fantasy that Ghost had with Angela and the one that Tommy's now living with Morea. Ghost believed that they could live a fantasy in Miami, whereas Tommy knows there is no escape in this life. Sure, they can go to Barcelona, but he will always end up right back here, where he belongs, which Morea does accept. Not only was Maria accepting of who Tommy was, he acknowledged that her picking him over her brother was a huge decision. Now this was interrupted by Kate who actually came here to apologise to Tommy which reinforces the change in her character. But just like back in power, he strolled in on Tommy and her girlfriend and she wasn't wrong in what she told Maria. Those who get close to Tommy do get killed. There was Holly and Lakeisha and there was also Gloria although she was a short fling. And look, let's not get it twisted, 
Kate has always been right when it came to Tommy's past because she knows Tommy has a big heart and is sometimes trusting of the wrong people. She warned him about Teresi and how he was the devil. She told him to get rid of Holly and she also warned him about Lakeisha. But Tommy put a bag of product in the back of her pocket and threw her out. Little did he know the damage that this would cause for Kate and it would also break the relationship between him and JP. So coupled with DMAC turning on Kate and all this mounting pressure and the breakdown in their family is what pushed Kate further into taking drugs that Tommy gave to her which did land her in deep trouble. When Tommy found her he just stood there and froze and who knows what would have happened if JP wasn't there but this family dynamic is something I'll come back around to towards the end which does tie in with Tommy's thirst for power, powder and respect. Now in regards to power and respect, Claudia was back in business. She wanted to meet with Roberto Ortega of the Marquez cartel and she set the meeting in the far north. And this is why Shanti was here, to get the information and feed it back to Tommy. But with all her newfound power, Claudia decided to show her force. She told Tommy that he should have killed her when he had the chance because now with the Marquez cartel behind her, she was untouchable. Unfortunately for her, she had no idea who she was dealing with. We've seen what Tommy's capable of in the past. Whether it be breaking out Alicia Jimenez to gain rid of loose ends like Maria Suarez or snitches like Spanky, the Grim Reaper will always catch you. Now having said that, Tommy did need to watch his back in episode 10. Miguel Garcia who was still hurting from Abuela's death, he wanted to finally put an end to Tommy Egan, especially for his grandmother who always knew Tommy Egan was coming for his position. This was a reminder that danger lurks around every single corner for Tommy Egan and despite him being on the verge of becoming the connect in Chicago, he still had a lot of enemies who wanted his head. Nazi took a shot at Tommy and we saw Tommy faking his death before turning the tables and killing Nazi. Over to the raid and the plan that Tommy put into motion early in episode 10. Tommy told Vic that the meet was set for 12pm tomorrow in the far north, knowing that law enforcement were either listening or Vic would report it back to them. Now on Stacey Marks' end, there was a bit of conflict. Bobby DeFranco knew that this information was too good to be true because it made no sense for them to have a meeting in the far north of Chicago. But Stacey Marks was so hell-bent on catching Tommy Egan and the Estrada cartel, she couldn't see the point that her husband was trying to make. She wanted to get the team ready for a raid. Stacey Marks wanted the task force to deliver a history-making RICO case to the DOJ, which wasn't possible without Vic's help, who was saying his final goodbyes to Gloria. But as always, Stacey had one last job for him, and of course she did. She was always moving the goalposts. This time, she wanted him to go to the meeting, and when they came in to arrest everyone, Vic would be arrested along with everybody to make it look less suspicious, but it was a huge risk on Stacey Marks' part. Now, with the police raid and where Stacey Marks thought she was about to get her man, as well as the Estrada cartel, they were all about to be in for one huge surprise. Tommy sent law enforcement to the meeting with Claudia Flynn, the Serbian network, and the Marquez cartel, and after heavy gunfire which ended with casualties on both sides, Roberto Ortega, Mirkovic and the Serbian network as well as Claudia Flynn were arrested. But not only did they have Claudia on drug charges, they also had her on conspiracy to commit murder which goes back to the recording from Vic and his end goal of wanting to make Claudia suffer which I'm going to come to in just a moment. But on law enforcement, they finally got a win which is unheard of in the power universe. They may have lost men and they didn't get Tommy and the Estrada cartel but they did get the Serbs and the leader of the Marquez cartel as well as Claudia Flynn. Power always make a point of how life always ends in death or jail, but for the most part of power and a few occasions, all we've ever seen is death. So this was a great little twist to the tale, although Stacey Marks wasn't too happy. She wanted Tommy Egan and the Estrada cartel, she's obsessed with catching them, just like Cooper Sacks and just like Blanca Rodriguez. Although it was her obsession that made her lose sight, Bobby did warn her that something fell off with the location, and despite them getting a huge win, all Stacey cared about was Tommy Egan. They just lost another member of their force, who was a dear friend to Bobby DeFranco, but Stacey Marks really was becoming unrecognizable to her husband. On the other side of Chicago was Vic, who knew something was off and in a desperate move. He finally came clean about Claudia being the one who killed Liliana, but it was too little too late. The damage had already been done, and just like Tommy said, he was a dead man walking. Tommy dropped him off to a warehouse where he was being watched by Bones and Raheem, while he was about to reap the rewards of what just happened. He was able to get rid of the Marquez cartel, the Serbian network and Claudia Flynn, eliminating his and the Estrada cartel's entire competition all in one, something Miguel Garcia failed to do and the best thing was the Estrada cartel's fingerprints were nowhere near it. Now with this latest move, Tommy wanted to be made the sole connect of Chicago but Che refused his proposal, he did make him a connect and gave him Merkovic's territory but he said Miguel stays and he was setting up a meeting between both of them to clear the air. 
This is where we saw Miguel and Tommy meeting Che, where he said healthy competition is always good for his business. However, there is a lot of bad blood between them, and you could sense the tension during this meeting between two of Chicago's biggest connects. Now there were a few big takeaways from Tommy being a connect. He and Diamond will now source their product directly from Che, not Miguel, and so that also leaves a huge hole in his pocket which he'll want back. Tommy also taunted him about Nazi's death, and so this game between them is definitely not over. Another storyline which wasn't over was avenging Liliana's death. Throughout season 2 the storyline did go cold, but the writers did a great job in circling back round to the beginning. Claudia made a phone call to Shanti in Cry for Help, but she soon realised that she was also in on the plan to have her arrested, and in comes Tommy who tells her he's got a gift from Liliana. Now let's just take a step back, even though Claudia does seem like she's about to join her father in Power Hell, let's just remember what they did with Felipe Lobos. Ghost tried to eliminate him while he was in jail, but he survived. They kept him alive and they faked his death. Now why I thought it was an important point to make is because it's not 100% confirmed that Claudia is dead and also because Stacey Marks will still be on the hunt for Tommy Egan and with Vic being made, she will need someone else. So could Claudia be offered a get out free jail card if, if she helps bring down Tommy Egan? This would also continue with the theme that we've recently seen on Ghost with Lauren being kept alive, so that's just a thought. Now as we're on the topic and themes across the power universe, we also saw Jannard getting his Lambo back from the Serbs and so I do wonder if we'll see Tariq St. Patrick doing the same in Ghost. Again, just something to keep an eye on in Season 4 of Ghost. Now taking back Jannard's Lambo wasn't Jannard and Shanti's only move towards the end of Season 2. They also thought it was a perfect moment to expose Tommy and Maria's relationship. Shanti hadn't lost her sight of her end goal, take the CBI, and with them now being the connect, it was right where she wanted it. And that brings me back over to the question I asked at the beginning of my breakdown. Tommy has become the connect of Chicago, but at what cost? DMAC is in the streets. He's also killed a nephew of one of the biggest partners in their coalition, King Kilo who's set to be released in season 3. Kate's in hospital from the drugs he gave to her, that was after she came to apologise to him and JP has had enough because anybody who gets close to Tommy just winds up hurt. There's also a brewing conflict between Tommy and Diamond because Diamond wasn't happy that Tommy kept Vic alive and Janard has been planting the seeds along with both of them keeping secrets from each other. And last but not least, Miguel rang Tommy to tell him he was never going to see Maria again while he burned the tickets to Barcelona. So Tommy may have achieved his part goal of becoming a connect in Chicago, but at what cost? It is finally poised for season 3, with a war brewing between Miguel Garcia and Tommy, a potential conflict within the CBI, King Kilo's release, DMAC being in the streets, Claudia potentially being alive, and Shanti Showstopper still making moves in the shadows.